The God of all consolation be with you and with your service. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne, You see this city? Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole of creation new, he said. I will give water from the well of life free to anybody who is thirsty. It is the rightful inheritance of the one who proves victorious and I will be his God, and he a son to me. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, you must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening here these last few days. What things, he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the woman had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing, broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told the story of what had happened on the road and how they recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This morning we celebrate the Requiem Mass for the repose of the soul of our brother in Christ, John Curran. We do so with sadness in our hearts, but also well-founded hope that John will be in peace in God's house. John was born 84 years ago in Letterkenny, one of 11, and I know some of his family in Ireland are joining us today for this Mass through the live stream. His parents, Francis and Margaret, brought him up in the faith that would always be part of his life. Upon leaving school in Letterkenny, John came over here to Glasgow at age 16, where he began to work driving on buses and started a career as a professional driver. John then went on to meet Hannah at the dancing. And although they lived only half an hour apart in Ireland, it was here in Glasgow, and through God's guiding hand, that they met and came together, setting them on the path to celebrating the sacrament of marriage as they fell in love in uh, St. Matthew's back in 1964. And God blessed them with many years of happy marriage with their own family, Desmond, who has sadly passed away, may he rest in peace, Sean, Katrina and Raymond. After retiring, John and Hannah moved back to Ireland for a while, but then they returned here, not least to be close to you, his family, and I know it was a great delight for John to see that family grow to include grandchildren, Lee, Serena, Dion, Robin, Linda, Stacy, Aisha and Jacqueline and three great-grandchildren, Kai, Arabella and Jackson. But as you think of these times that you spent with John, those precious bonds of family life, and not just the special occasions, but all the times, daily life, you spent this company, today and together we give thanks to God for the blessings of family life. They're surely one of the greatest blessings we receive and experience in life. And this morning, through our tears, in our sadness, and with these memories, we draw them together to be our prayers in God's presence. And we show God how much we loved 
our brother John, and ask the Lord to give him eternal rest. John and Hannah were very much part of this parish community of St. Dominic's ever since it was founded. And so it's right and fitting that we bring John back here today. And we pray that this church become for him the gateway into paradise. I remember John and Hannah coming faithfully to hear to Mass over the years. And I know, of course, it was a sad blow to suddenly lose Hannah seven years ago. And we pray that they are together now in God's presence to behold his face in heaven. John, of course, continued to practice his faith and would never leave church on Sunday morning without saying hello to me, without a friendly word, without a good morning. He's going to be missed from our parish community as well. And those of, the, those of you closest to John, of course, knew the way in which he approached this final downturn in his health and how he seemed to accept what lay ahead in faith. And I remember going to visit him and praying with him and giving him the sacraments a final time, spiritual food for the journey that his soul is now embarking upon. And I know in these last weeks, his family have been particularly close by and have looked after him. John has passed away while we're still celebrating the season of Easter in the church. These are the days when our faith is deepened by once again contemplating the resurrection of Jesus and how it changed death for us all. Where he has gone, we hope to follow. And we are linked to Jesus dying and rising through our baptism, that indelible seal God sets upon our souls when we are baptised, as it was and is in John's immortal soul when he was baptised in Letter Kenny. The holy water used today that we sprinkle around is a reminder of that baptismal link with our Lord and that bond with Christ written on our souls. And yet we can wander through life without giving this reality too much thought. We can even seem distant and removed from Jesus' resurrection and what it means for us. Even some of Jesus' own disciples were perplexed about what happened to Jesus on the cross and after that. And that's where we hear this beautiful gospel today. These disciples are walking in the wrong direction. They're walking away from the holy city of Jerusalem, debating about what had happened to the Lord. They had faith, but they were confused, and they didn't take the next step to believe. So important it is so that they believed in the power of the resurrection and how it affects us all, that the risen Christ himself comes to walk with these two disciples. And although he does, they don't recognize him at first, perhaps because they are confused in their faith. So Jesus sets about explaining the scriptures to them, and he brings them to the point where spiritually their eyes are opened, and their faith stirs within them. And Jesus speaks to them, and they press him to stay with, him, with them a little longer. And it leads them to say in that beautiful phrase, that our hearts not burn within us, as he spoke to us. Our Lord had revived their weak faith, and through hearing his words, and through the baking of the bread, he has restored it. And so it is for us too, in these days of sorrow, having just lost John, we may be confused, we may be even weak in our faith, but the risen Christ comes to us, and speaks to us, and we encounter him in this Mass. We hear his words in the Gospel, and we experience the breaking of the bread, the heavenly bread, that our brother John received countless times by coming to Mass over the years in Holy Communion. John practiced his faith, passed it on to his family, and it's our prayer that he receives the heavenly reward our Lord promises for those who believe and eat his body and drink his blood. That was John's faith, and it is our faith, and a faith we renew in this Mass today. We celebrate this funeral Mass in the month of May, the month dedicated in a particular way to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So let us ask her powerful intercession now, whom we revere as a refuge of sinners and the gate of heaven to intercede for John. We pray in this Mass that John is forgiven any sins he committed through human weakness, for none of us are perfect, and we all rely on God's mercy and compassion. May God bless John's family too, with new reserves of faith, and renewed faith in the power of his resurrection, that one day, by this power, we shall be with our brother again. May our brother John rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Let us stand. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For John, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up in the last day. Lord, in your mercy. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may receive the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy. For the family and friends of our brother John, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend, Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother John. Cleanse him and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Our good and good of all is holy church. Let us stand. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant John may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mercy of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. 
And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this on of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Dominic and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family 
whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Let us stand. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant John, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. 